we have we have the the person with the drinking problem coming home, right? And we're trying to set it up where when he walks in with the lights off, you know, this light won't be on, that he'll be able to find his I really think we have to do something. I think we do have to need this light on. He turn this light on because he otherwise even if he goes in the open and the the uh the counter okay so at least it bothers him so he knows he can open this and turn it off the worst thing that could happen to that is he falls in but i think if he's bothered if he's sober enough to be bothered by the light i don't think there's a likelihood that he'll fall into the cabinet because one time i came in and he had literally he didn't even this wasn't even there he literally was laying face down over there on the couch like he barely made it. Like he was literally he face down. down. He had totally collapsed. Take his shoes he, off or nothing. No, he just obviously he just came I in know, and staggered did, over yeah. and fell. Or, you know. Oh. Well, that's what you're dealing with. I took in a homeless person with a. a how can you tell, us? Michael? You know, how I've known him. I've known him since 1992. I've known him as a as a, a social friend, 2005 for 13, 14 years. So I meet him, and he's volunteering at New Fast, and I discover he's living homeless on the subway. Now, if I discover you were living on the subway, sleeping on the subway for two weeks, and had everything you owned in four bags, you had to be lapsed or something, don't you think I would take you in, too? Probably, yes. Yeah. And was I wrong when I took you in? When I took you in because you had problems, but you came over them, right? Well, I try to save cripples. That's my thing. <laughs> I collect cripples. No, I am. I have, it's called a Mitri complex. You know, they say, I collect cripples, I'm overly generous to the undeserving. I love that description. What was it, a Mitri? And it's called a Mitri complex, yeah, it's like you're a savior. You understand that maybe it's because I never had a family. I go out and I try to find people to put in my life, and the only people I can find to put in my <laughs> life are dear. <laughs> I mean, that's an honest reality. And I've done that all my life, because no one can stand me, Michael. If you had, if you had a good income and your own job, do you think you would put up with the kind of cr crap that I? Who was that said? I'm all. Oh, Jamie said it today so well. That I'm always, I'm always in charge wherever I am. That's was her. That's how she read me. Called me a male chauvinist. Been a, been a boss, <laughs> that dumb too. dame calling me a male chauvinist. Ah, <laughs> oh, that sicko. She told me she's crazy. You've been a boss for too long. Huh? You've been a boss for too no, long. No, what it is is that I realize that I... You know, it's your stuff. And it, it's my stuff. world. And I paid yeah. the rent. That's why I never had anyone that paid any rent except when Willie chipped in $50 a week. Big deal. And when I rented your room. <laughs> yeah, right now if you could, if you could reclaim Until the room. my alcohol is huh? took off. I can give enough of this stuff, huh? Until my alcohol is <laughs> took off. Got laid off. You know what Mark Schultz said to me? This is about Mark Schultz. He said to me, in the back of the truck, and he said, did Christian and Michael really live, sleep in here together? I said, yes. I said, it wasn't all filled up with this furniture. We just got rid of the chair. I said, it was just two sleeping bags. You know, I, I thought it was longer. You said it was just for a few nights at a time. No, but, it, was, it was for like a whole summer. Right, and you would get... The end. So tell him what it was. You'd, you'd bring in and you make sure that he had food. Well, a bottle of the pee in. Yeah, like the pee And I would leave food out there for him. There. And huh? In case he, he or I had to pee. Right. And sometimes I'd wake up in the middle of the night and I'm saying, I'll tell you, I'm sorry, Christian. And I'd go <laughs> off to the side. And <laughs> the but he would do the same thing. Yeah? I mean, he usually came in a lot later than me. I told oh, really? Him, I told <laughs> <down> <laughs> what time would, I'd be out of what time would you? What time would you? o'clock in the morning. And oh, the shovel snow? Down. Even then, the shovel snow to get their next alcohol? No, it was alcohol? the summertime. It wasn't the wintertime. He so, would stay in the van with me during the winter. Oh, so you, you would get out of the van, what, to hustle money for the next drink? Well, yeah, basically. I always had, you know, after I... And you told me, you told me... After I, like, you know, I had to shake so damn bad and I'd take my first <laughs> swallow. And then I'd start throwing my guts up there. <laughs> Well, you told me that you told right. Next you told me that you would be able to go down, and we're able to get thirty or forty dollars by panhandling yeah. by eight or nine in the morning. Sixteen dollars was for the big bottle, of Georgie. Yeah, and then I would either get six McDoubles, a five-dollar foot long, <laughs> the 
two dollars and twenty two seven two dollars and twenty two cents hot dogs for seven eleven. And then you got the chili cheese and the, and the, and the cheese sauce. And I'd go to the Chinese restaurant and get a dollar white rice and three meals for three thousand two hundred cents. For how much? Three dollars and twenty-two cents. This is this is and telling me. Of course, me. Christian would come in the van and he was hungry. And yeah. I always had something to eat. And then the guys who I used to drink with said, never come by my truck. Good. And they'd walk past and they'd be Michael, are you in there? And I'd say, be me by the flagpole. Never stay by the truck. So I'd go oh. to the park and I'd bring my little bottle. And of course, they had these shakes. <laughs> I would get the bottle. So I'd take four or five good. Ones. Four or five good mouthfuls to tighten them up until nine o'clock when they came around and they could go get their own bottle. Oh. Wow. You were just such a good doer. Are you clever? Wow. Meet me by the flagpole. Well, then, which was, would, then I would have my that, big bottle, and they didn't get served in 90% of the stores in Hoboken. Right. You went out for all the time get served in, in the liquor store. What are you Even dumb? then you were different. So what I do is I yeah. have the empties. Yeah. I take my big bottle, and I pull yeah. up the empties. So whenever they said, here, here's five dollars, go run go to run to Washington Street. Oh. I'd take the five dollars and give them the bottle. <laughs> so, so you I were, this three so you times, were dealing. So I had to get, Panhandle was two more dollars to get my big bottle. Wow. You were, you were see this is what this is you were in business for yourself. This is what I'm trying to push you to do again. Why did you do it when you were alcoholic, but you can't do it as a human being? I want you to go out and sell buttons. Do you see the money that mother, woman was making in buttons today? Yeah, I, I Let's get actually, our buttons uh, going. She wasn't the only one too. It was four. I know. I paid I paid three I paid three, two for five for the for the the um Oprah Winfrey button and and do not not another deportation button or was that her now that was the other woman but she was doing real well Good for her. I think I asked I think I asked the one guy when I bought the other buttons it was ten dollars I said can you change a 50 I don't know whether I said a 50 or a hundred I think it was her I think it was her and she opened up up here I ordered ten dollars. She took the fifty, and I I saw her unzip here, and I saw all these twenties, and all the big bills were up here, you know. And then I went back and gave her the Marsha buttons for free, and I gave her my card and told her I was been in the button business. I'd love to get in touch with her again, you know. She had interesting buttons. I'm hoping to God I can find her. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start. Again. I know the button business. We can put. We can put. There's no reason. That transsexual people have to be prostitutes. They can go out on the streets selling anti-Trump buttons, women's rights buttons, transgender rights buttons. You can make a lot of they money. Can, they can go out. Money, you don't last long. No, no. And most prostitutes. No, they don't want to be prostitutes. One, most of them, okay, they do it because they have no. Most of them. What I'm saying is, I don't know. Trans prostitutes do not make tons of money. They are starving. I didn't say to death. trans prostitutes. I just said prostitutes. Yeah, I know the girls, the runaway girls. I feel sorry for them. Drinking drug and then right, they get and old then, real quick. Right, that's right. No problem. But they get if they take them back to Ohio. What is the off tour? They go back to Ohio, and after finding out that they climbed in a cab with some dirty old man, they could make three, five hundred dollars be taken out to a nightclub or whatever, or to a fancy show, big restaurant, fancy hotel. They go back to home in Ohio. And they say, well, you can work down at McDonald's for six fifteen an hour. How long would that girl be working at McDonald's at six fifteen an hour thinking about, oh, man, six fifteen an hour? Man, this is horrible. This is horrible. You know, McDonald's, the bell goes off. You got to go get the fries. And all she can think about is, wow, man, back in New York, I was climbing in the back of. But what it is is they, it, it's, a, it's a path of self-destruction. It sure is. It is. So then they go back to that because it's so attractive. The and problem, they end up the being, they get the destroyed. By, people say, force. understand, I don't advocate prostitution. Yeah. I say that prostitution is the last honorable act. Because after you sell your body, what is there left to do? Rob. But if you go out and you're willing to sell your access to your body for a certain amount of money and not rip people off and whatever... But inevitably what happens is they make a lot of money and then they feel so bad about the life they're living. You can't have people using your body like Grand Central and Station. So you start, you have all this money. So what do you, like Timmy. Timmy was making $2,500 on a weekend. He had nothing to do all week. So he sat around and started playing around with drugs. As you know, he was a drug addict. And after he hit 18, 19, 20, he no longer was he the hottest, youngest thing with the big Italian schlong on the block. He was mainly a straight boy. 
I mean, every tattoo on his body is related to a girl he had an affair with. Then he'd tell me he'd given up on women. You know why? Because, you know, women, you can't be a... I mean, it's so sad because prostitution destroys people. And people misunderstand when I tell people, you know, that I was... I, I learned more on Hollywood Boulevard. It's not like I'm advocating. I'm just telling people, if you understand the life, if you've ever been in that life, well, like Jamie and I, I share that. We talk about, we talk about... Can I, can I ask you a question? Sure. You ever meet a human being that wasn't complicated in any shape or form? Yeah, but what I'm saying is, we live, <laughs> yeah. what we live in this, closed. what we live in this world where we put labels on people, well, they, they, they can be problem. straight or gay, or they can be prostitute, John, prostitute yeah, or John, and they're there's the same kind of labels as you put on straight or gay, or you know whatever label well, you want to put again, born again Christian, you know I'm putting, and every little box we think once we know once you're in that box we think we know everything about you, and that's just not. Little neat little, what's his name? Ticky tacky little boxes, all just the same. Oh, what is his name? He rang some great songs. He's an old leftist songer. Ticky tacky little boxes are all just the same. I you kind of got me lost in that one. But anyway, the fact of the matter is, it's Bob true. Dylan? No, oh, no, no, no. It's, it's older than Bob Dylan. He's a guy. Oh, okay. His name will come to me. He was an old, he was 60 or 50, 60 years old when Bob Dylan was just starting. Anyway, I gotta get to bed. Yeah, I have show. music playing. Ten o'clock, brother. And I, oh man, and I've got a look at that good. I hope you'll get that picture mailed off to your brother tomorrow. Yeah. And I hope you'll be awake. <laughs> I'm not looking forward to that. <laughs> I I could put something in the hall. I told you, I one night I had, I heard it was a big hard dish I had here. I had it sitting on that crate. I heard clang, clang. I thought, oh, God, he's in. He knocked something over. And then I heard, I said, oh, I better get up and check. I got up, and he was standing in my office like this, teetering, right? Teetering, teetering. Tim Burr. I, I'm looking at the TV because he couldn't stand the TV was on. I said, get out of there right now. He's very docile as a drunk. He's just blurry-eyed, right? He avoided me. I said, get out of there right now. Get in there and get in bed. He twaddled in here and he got in bed. Sleep it off. You know, and the next next morning, you know, I gave him a lecture, ran and raved at him. I make sure on nights like that, so I put on a Washington Journal loud in the morning. And then I start that J-pop high, that rock and roll high energy rock, so he has to go in and use the, he has to use the, <laughs> he has to, I mean, he has to use he has to use that 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 one computer and he has to sit there with his J pop or rock or whatever I have playing loud enough to echo through the apartment. It's unbearable in his room. I tell him if you get your room cleaned out, I'll turn it, I'll put it on in the living room instead of here in the office. And he that'll get him to toddle out and start taking care of it out here. But the man is the man is a <laughs> <laughs> See, you understand, I, I'm a human being, and when you, when you get, when you get the, the, every man, his house is his castle, and I tell, I tell Mark, I'm the queen here, <laughs> and you don't want to anger the queen, <laughs> <laughs> now get your mess cleaned up in the living room and I'll turn the music off in the office and I can have it in the living room. We'll both be happier. And he'll get up and he'll do it. But you have to discipline him. It's all in training. Okay, my brother went on enough. So you're ready to take over now, right? <laughs> yeah.